Look, I don't think you can compare in, in any way uh, the, the difference of what's going on here. This is um, you know, one occasion that, that Keir has, has answered fully, which is that he was in a constituency office uh, with a co Labour colleague uh, campaigning uh, in a by-election. They were busy making calls, having done a visit. They broke from uh, making calls to stand in the kitchen for 20 minutes to, to eat some sandwiches and, and have a drink before resuming um, uh, making uh, those uh, phone calls. And uh, that you know, is very much you know, what you might describe uh, as a work event. I think what we are seeing, what we have seen in Downing Street, uh, after revelation after revelation, is uh, social gatherings on an industrial scale, pre-organised with invitations going out, with uh, alcohol being ordered, especially trestle tables being put up and the like, uh, with, um, with people seemingly raising concerns about whether that was appropriate or not, right through that initial lockdown and uh, beyond, uh, with then uh, the Prime Minister and the government uh, lying about it, denying it took place, unable to answer basic questions over many, many weeks now that this has been uh, happening. And that's why the Prime Minister has lost authority and he's lost trust and people just perceive him uh, as, as being a liar about these things. I think had he said uh, at the beginning of all of this, look, there was this one event that I went to, I, I saw it was a, a work event, we were, I was working, we were all working, we all went back to work straight afterwards, uh, you know, and, and put his hands up about that, full disclosure, I think people would have been uh, forgiving, completely forgiving of that. Uh, but that's not what we've seen here. The difference seems to be between the event that, that your leader went to on the 30th of April uh, 2021 and the one of the Prime Minister on the 20th of May 2020. They were both work events, we're being told. Um, one of them was cheese and wine and crisps. The other one was beer and sandwiches. Uh, one lasted 20 minutes, the other lasted 25 minutes. No, I think, um, you know, what we've uh, seen, and as, as I say, this is just one of, I think, 17... Um, parties that we now know about. Not that the Prime Minister down. attended. We're talking so, about the leader. Uh, well, We're talking we about the Prime Minister. We, well, we don't know. We don't know all of that. But this was a, a pre-arranged invitation. It was after work. It was not during work. Invite. The PM didn't know that. People, the PM hundred, tells us he didn't know that. Hundred people. Well, he does now, and he should have known it. He should have known it months and he ago. When he, when, when he stood up in when he stood up in Parliament months ago and said that no rules have been broken, no, party, no parties took place, is what he said. He said he hadn't attended parties. I would have, if I had been him, uh, and I'm sure the same of, of Keir Starmer, I would have thought to myself, oh, hang on a minute, wasn't there that thing that I went to uh, when we were in the middle of lockdown in, in, in April 2020, where a lot of people were there and, and were drinking wine, shouldn't I say something about that now, now that I'm being asked about parties? It, it was the end of a long day. He went out to get some fresh air. It was the end of a long day. He went out to get some fresh air. He didn't um, go out to get some fresh that's air. That's what he says. He and how can we prove otherwise? Not, Your leader broke not, off, went into the kitchen, had a butty and a beer and went back. Um, no, the, my viewers this morning will be thinking, they're all as bad as one another. Well, that's what you see. That's exactly what the government want you to think. That's exactly what they want to think because they want to distract from their own very serious situation now. The Prime Minister, by his own admission, regrets that, that happening, and he said that he wished that he'd sent everybody back inside, i.e. He, he understood it to have been a social gathering, a social gathering in, in, the, in the workplace, uh, which is not the same as getting something to eat in, 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 the, in the workplace. They want to tar everybody with the same brush because they want that then to become a problem for everybody instead of what it actually is, which is industrial-scale partying and industrial scale cover up and lying about all of those uh, gatherings, many of which were completely pre-arranged. Invitations went out, wine fridges were stocked up, trestle tables were, were put out, DJs were, were arranged. Uh, you know, this is industrial scale partying that then the Prime Minister has denied and lied about in Parliament and elsewhere for many, many weeks to cover up, which is why he is now unable to address the really big issues facing this country that people want him to be addressing, like the cost of living crisis, like the fact that all our 
energy bills are going to go up by tens of pounds a month uh, in the next uh, few weeks. Food prices are going up. Transport costs are going up. Petrol costs are going up. Uh, rents are at their highest level ever. And he's just put taxes up on, on ordinary working people. That's coming in in a couple of months as well. They want a prime minister that can address these issues, not who's hiding away in Downing Street, thinking up controversial policies that can distract the public from uh, the attention of what he's actually done and what he should be accountable for, nor that... trying to rake up something okay, that has been addressed by Keir Starmer on many occasions. Okay. And isn't that the point? Isn't that what the opposition should be doing right now? Rather than worrying about parties or otherwise that happened um, up to two years ago, what you should be doing is holding the government's feet to the fire when it comes to the cost of living, the fact that more than 25% of homes, more than a quarter of all homes will be in fuel poverty uh, by April of this year. And we are potentially sending military vessels to uh, take on sinking dinghies in the channel. Isn't that what the opposition should be focusing on? Well, that's exactly what we have been focusing on. We've come up with a big, bold plan to address the cost of, of energy in, in this country. Uh, a cut to VAT that would mean uh, £200 off the average, every, every average household uh, in this uh, country, as well as a windfall tax on the uh, North, North Sea oil and, and gas and, and others who made a right boon out of, uh, out of this energy crisis that, that could increase... Uh, the, uh, the the discount for, for those on the lowest pay for around about £600 a year. This is a big, bold policy that we've come up with because we're not distracted by our own uh, leadership uh, crisis and we're not distracted by our leader having no authority and no uh, respect. And we're able to come up with these big ideas and that's what, uh, that's what we need from the government right now and they're just not doing that.